Let's take a look at this place right here. This piece of land is called Turkey, and it sits in a really interesting place geographically as it works almost as a bridge between Europe and Asia. Bordering Greece and Bulgaria to the west, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Iran to the east, as well as Syria and Iraq to the south. And then all of that sharing a land border, a bit further down south sits Cyprus. It's home to roughly 85 million people, and when we mention Turkey works as a bridge, here's what we mean. The country is surrounded by water on three sides, the Black Sea to the north, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and the Aegean Sea to the west, making it a large peninsula that bridges the two continents. Turkey has some amazing landscapes, being a predominantly mountainous country, it feels almost as if every picture taken here could work as a wallpaper, like this one for example. Anyway, all these mountains surrounding the country makes it very vary quite a lot from region to region, with milder Mediterranean type climate at the coast, two hot summers and cold winters at the inland plateau. It's also prone to some severe hailstorms. Turkey is split up into seven different geographical regions, each with a major city working as the capital of the area. The regions came to life after a geography congress was held in Ankara in 1941, and are created based on the climate, flora, fauna, location and so on. The largest area among the regions is the Eastern Anatolia region, but even though it's large, it's also the area where the population density is at its lowest. The majority of the region is covered with mountains, and this is where you can find the highest one in the country, called Mount Ararat. Van is the major city of the region and holds about half a million people, and this city sits right next to Turkey's largest lake, called Lake Van. The second largest region is the Central Anatolia region, and as the name tells, it sits in the middle of the country bordering almost every other region. This is the driest and least rainy region of the country. The major city here is also the capital of the entire country, and is called Ankara. It's home to over 5 million people and is the second largest city in terms of population. This is a mostly flat region, and agriculture is what the economy of the region is based upon. The Black Sea region is the widest of them all, as it extends almost across the entire country. It's mostly covered with forest and has four seasons of precipitation. This is also the only region where tea plants grow in the country, a drink that's being consumed a lot in Turkey. Trabzon is the major city and holds around 300,000 people. The Mediterranean region, as you can tell from its name, is the region where the climate is the mildest. This is usually the place where tourists travel for a nice beach vacation. And its major city, Antalya, with its roughly 1.3 million inhabitants, is the home of the Turkish Riviera. Not to be confused though with another city in the region with a similar name that also sees a lot of tourism called Alanya. The Asian region has the highest coastal length and it's home to the third most populated city called Izmir. But the most spectacular place of this region is perhaps Pamukkale. Widely thought to be one of the most beautiful places in the world, its name means Cotton Castle. And it's home to some truly amazing travertine terraces. Oh, and if you didn't know, travertine is a type of limestone formed by the evaporation of river and spring waters. The Marmara region is the most developed and energy consuming region, and it has the highest population density of them all. It's home to the most crowded and perhaps fascinating city in all of Turkey called Istanbul. With roughly 50 million people living there, the city has some insane poles. And when we mentioned earlier that Turkey as a whole works as a bridge between East and West, this city really showcases both sides of the two continents. And the city holds both modern and traditional as well as familiar and exotic. And it has been part of many many empires throughout history. Lastly, we have the Southeastern Anatolia region, which is the smallest region of the country. It has the lowest population of them all, has some very drought summers, and is also where all oil production in the country is being done. The major city is called San Liurfa, a beautiful city with a lot of archaeological findings, castles and hikes to go on. It's home to about 600,000 people and is mostly known for its historical sites. Sea turtles, monk seals, dolphins, red foxes, jackals, wild boars and mountain goats are just a few of the over 1500 types of animals that exist in this country. Although you cannot really talk about animals in Turkey and not mention the grey wolf. This is the national animal of Turkey and it symbolizes goodness, courage and strength. And the wolf has great meaning in Turkish mythology. As most countries nowadays, Turkey is home to numerous religions. And just as in many other countries, babies being born automatically are registered into the major religion of the country, unless their parents have registered them to a minority religion. And according to this record, about 99% of Turks identify as Muslims. The official language of Turkey is Turkish. When it comes to using English as a second language, Turkey is, according to a report by the WE Forum, one of the two European countries that uses English the least, with Netherlands, Denmark and Sweden being at the top of the list, Azerbaijan being at the very bottom and Turkey just above them. Turkish Lira is the official currency of Turkey. One Turkish Lira is equivalent to 100 Kuroosh. 
banknotes come in values of 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 and 200 and the coins in 5, 10, 25 and 50 kuruş. And this is the Turkish flag. The deep red color and with the symbols of a star and crescent in white. 